Welcome to Rockcast. Dyson Production. Man, that's so cool, dude. You got, dude. I'm telling you. Fucking and if hey. I could YouTube go, like, once I have some space, dude, I can build a place to where I'm undercover a little bit and things like that. Then I'll really take off on my YouTube. Plus, I'll have people to feed, right? Because I could be like, oh, I'm gonna justify bot cooking this night because I got six fucking hungry kids over here. Yeah, dude, yeah. that's awesome. That's awesome. I'm excited for you guys. And three. Why am I lagging on my side? Hold on. Okay, there we go. In three, two, one. All right, folks. What's up? Welcome to a moment with Tim Lambert, a man who holds my heart very dear because he holds the heart of the mightiest metalist human being that everyone knows and loves, Mrs. Tracy Abbott, which is how I met him. Uh, from what I understand, Rhino, dude. Nah, that's probably not the right way to put that. How would I describe it? Stage. All right, why don't, you, why don't you go ahead and say what you do? Yeah. I, uh, I'm a stage. I'm a stage building expert. Uh, and, yeah, built built a shitload of concerts. Have you been to a concert? Uh, White River, the Gorge. In the last twelve years, I probably have my hands on it somewhere. I, uh, that was funny. I posted that one of our first mayhem thing and, and Tracy was like, Oh my God, you know, Tim worked that show. I was like, it's yeah. weird. You were both, he was probably staring at you in the mosh pit, not even knowing it, you know, from behind the stage. It's fucking yeah. magic, man. I've worked and it doesn't have to be every job you, I mean, anyways, no point no, going there, Tim, because I want to get ranty. <laughs> feel like I lucked out on that. So I'm just thankful. You know, I'm, I'm a blessed guy, dude. I got, I, I have a really amazing woman that is so driven and so has this goal in mind. And I'm so, I just, I'll fucking praise her every moment of every day for the rest of my life. Uh, uh, well, she had one hell of a big rock to hold on to through it all, dude. I mean, it was absolutely a lot of people would have been like, oh, really? You want to go back to school? Yeah, you're going to, you're going to do, I mean, you know, a lot of people would have even seen that in her you saw it and not only that you supported it and pushed it forward and you two it was beautiful. Tracy, Tracy beautiful. works what well, Tracy worked for me and and Tracy has some um wait wait let's get this literal so right. so people don't think you meant like oh I found her hot you know Tracy worked for me no like literally Tim was Tracy's boss for a little while right. there Right, and, and, and but we became really good friends, and I just saw a lot of drive in her, and like I say, just, I mean, I, I she doesn't like it when I talk about the, you know, you know how Tracy is, oh, I know. but I just want to give her, I want to give her a shout out, because that is the most driven person I fucking know right there, dude. Right. So if you would like to see who he's talking about, why don't you check out episode four, where Miss Tracy Abbott delivers to me my Slayer pendant, and is in this various studio right here. This is what I have to stop doing. We're going to stop right now. Yes, you, Tracy, awesome. I right. think she understands how much you love and respect her, bro. It's Absolutely. ridiculously, it's gross how much you two love each other. It makes me sick as a metalhead. Now, Tim, you have been given the questions. Yeah. You know, they're silly. I actually asked Alexa to uh, look them up for me, like ask a bunch of questions. And I, I thought the first one was good. It, it's so contrite. But it's after watching these, man, it's really cool to see people's different reactions and what they feel and maybe give them a second to think or to give advice to other people. And you've been around a while. You've been through some shit, different several level lives. And I would be interesting in somebody who's been in life threatening situations to just awesome standing in front of a creation where 50,000 fans are are having the best night of their entire lives because you and a ragtag group of motherfuckers and motherfuckettes put together the show. I mean, that's quite a vast canvas of experience. So I would like to know to you, and given this last year of uh, aggressive contemplation, what do you think the difference is, question number one, between living and existing? All right, so 
I, I did think about this, but to me, dude, existing is is what I have been doing a lot of in the last year, right? And this COVID thing, right? Existing is when you're sitting on the couch playing video games without a care in the world about what's going on around you because you you're sick of hearing it, basically. But, but so to me, that's I've just kind of gone through a lot of existing through COVID. But there's this other part of that I've gone through in COVID, the living part of it, which is um, I, I love to create things, dude. I'm not I'm not a, a musician by any means, but I love to sing. So I sing all everything all the time. Um, I love to cook food. I love to see people happy. So when I'm doing those things, I'm I'm existing, right? Right. Does that make sense? But when I'm sitting on the couch at Cyberpunk for seven hours straight because I got nothing else to do, I mean, I, then you know, living in you got to live your best life in the sense of do something that you think is fucking cool every day, right? Uh, I love music, and so I'm really, I'm really living, dude. When I'm when I'm hearing the right songs and playing thing, just cooking, being you know, making Tracy happy, dude. That's living, you know. The baby, yeah. you know what I mean? Yeah. My granddaughter, that's life, man. You know, being around the grandkids, that's life, brother. You know what I mean? Um. So there is a big thing about just sitting around doing nothing. Being that I've, I'm a stoner and those things, and right, right. And that you, you tend to just exist in that world, right? That's the that's the world of a stoner. You're just kind of eh, sitting there. So you got to pick up. Tracy got me Rocksmith for Christmas. I've been tinkering around on my guitar a little more. Nice. Um, you know, I just uh, if I'm gonna sit in front of the TV, I want to do something creative in front of the TV. Being there, fucking shooting cyberpunk people, or yeah, you know. I got to play cyberpunk yet. What uh, you know, it's weird. Is I'm actually getting for me though. <laughs> A lot of people went really deep with the existence thing and and what it means metaphorically. But I I, I like how you kind of come at it like it's not a horrible thing just existing. You can do it and and you escape even by doing it. Because I've done the same thing. I've really withdrawn from reading the social media and everything. Even what's going on today, I looked. I was like, oh, somebody's going to get murdered. And then I just, right. I'm done with it for until until I know what's going on. Um, But, yeah, definitely living. Yeah, and you and your grandkids, man. Are, uh, but that's what I'm saying, dude. When you pick up right. your little daughter, when your granddaughter looks at you and she's like, pop, pop, and she can't, and she wants you just to play a stupid thing or, or, or touch my beard or do whatever, then, then I feel like I'm living my life, man. Right, awesome. but like I say, sit on the couch and play video games and just have an existing moment for once in a while. Hey, that's not. I could go deep into that question, dude. Like, oh my God, I've been in some fucking terrible situations. Yeah. But I, you know what? I've learned something, and I can say this: I've learned this from Tracy. I just try to live my life for what's going on today, bro. What's happening today? Right? Yeah, she's really good at that, man. She really is. Okay, I. But we got this whole new life that's coming ahead, this whole path before us, right? And I'm just going to take that every one day at a time, man, until I get through it. And then we're going to Brutus has two yards now. I mean, that's right. going to be great for everybody. <laughs> it's just trying to get past, like, I don't think, I mean, I think about the COVID thing. I have an old father, you know what I mean? And I, and yeah. um, I, my aunt died from COVID, mm. right? So, and it made me think about him, Tracy's family being sick with it, uh, you know. And and I'm my doctor, I'm my personal physician, he's he's like, I don't want you out in the world doing that shit, man. man You're just, I'm, I, you know, I have sleep apnea, and I have, you know, uh, this I'm, doesn't feel I'm generic, a big does man. It? I hope so. it feels natural. <laughs> what you got to do? Man. Yeah. Now makeup. Okay. <laughs> All right. And three, two, one. All right. Awesome, man. Awesome. See that part right there is always a part that feels so fucking generic when I come in and, and we're back. I got Tim Lambert here, but I'm not going to do that because I'm not a douchebag and I can edit out till right there. So Tim, beautiful, beautiful. All right. The second question, um, was much more personal kind of, uh, when I phrased it, I, I want to take the word fail out of it immediately because I, I phrased it as what was something, unless that's what you thought about and you're like, fuck, 
But you know, failed or attempted, or maybe a goal or a dream that you know you 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 want a second chance at, or you feel like you could redo, or maybe life is just kind of redone it for you. I, ba- I guess basically the question is everything. How's that? Here's the funniest thing, dude. And this is such an easy question for me to answer because the only thing that I feel like I ever didn't achieve what I thought that I was going to was being married to my first wife, right? Okay. Uh, I just didn't achieve all the things that we planned on achieving in, in that and why you got married and what, right? right. So, I, and here's the thing. I do, I get to do that again, right? So, right. the other things in my life, you know, I think about like work I've done or just my past life and things I just like to, I keep a lot of shit close to my vest, you know what I mean? Yeah. That's my business of things I've done, and I don't I don't go blurt it out to the fucking world or whatever. Um, but I can tell you this: Have I ever felt like I, I would like to try to do something again, dude? I, I I've stood with Lemmy and took shots of fucking Jack, and smoked weed with Willie Nelson, and Woo! fucking and I've just done some cool ass shit, right? So the the one thing I want to achieve is to grow old with the woman I love, man. That's all. That's it. You know? Right. So, you know, everything else, dude, is just, I don't, I, I'm, I'm of this opinion about life, Dennis. You know, you get to play the fucking role, but you don't get to write the script, brother. Absolutely. Absolutely. Yeah. And you if you do play it right, it. you could actually remember most of it. <laughs> right. So, I mean, and, that, and, and that's the thing, too, dude. So, I, I never really thought, like, I used to tell my kids, it's like, you're not a fucking failure if you don't do something right, right? It, it, it's not your bag, man, right? Not everybody does the same shit the same fucking way. Uh, I like the word fail, so you're good by taking that word out of the question. Yeah, it was, it was, it was kind of set it up, like, it kind of set up, it went against what I thought, but. And what I meant by saying that I go back to the thing that I wanted to be successful at was being a husband. Um, because I can tell you why I felt that way. My father was married 11 times. Jeez, dude gets around, huh? <laughs> okay, wait, wait, wait. he was married 12 times because he married the same woman twice, so I only consider him his wife once, right? Um, and I always said, like, if I'm going to get married, I'm going to fucking do it because it's, you know, it's just, I, I want to do it right, you know what I mean? Uh, but I feel like now I got a great second chance of having that life again, you know? We talk about, like, moving forward with the things in our life. Tracy and I are super happy. People ask me a lot about when are we going to get married and things like that. And then that's, that's we, we are, when the time's right. When the, when, when the finger says, now's the time, let's do that now. Ain't nobody, right? else, ain't nobody else's decision to make, man. Well, dude, I look at her every day, and and... She is like that. She is that person to me. I'd fucking lay down my life for her. So can't wait till you guys get to decorate your new house together. Your house together, not that little fucking apartment. And that's another thing. So you know, like I said, dude, all these little steps, man. And Tracy has taught me a lot of things, dude. And that's the thing about being successful or failing. If you skip steps, you're going to fail, right? I if you take it. all of the steps in the right way, you're going to be successful. Don't skip steps in life and you'll be successful. Yeah, man. thanks. Thanks. You could give me that advice maybe 42 years ago, bro. No. <laughs> That's the wisdom, right? This is all learned shit by eating. Yeah, this is. Yeah. Tracy goes to school and she gets all this insight about life that maybe I have a different kind of insight. Like, I will beat the shit out of you, right? I will fucking take you down to the ground. I, I will, uh, you know, and I'm, and I'm saying that because. We all have our capabilities in this world. Tracy has softened me mentally as a man. And by that I mean she's made me see things that, in a different perspective. No, wait. Like, I want to know for the record. Sorry, go ahead. Tracy has just found her spark, dude. You know? And I think that in a lot of ways, Dennis has found his spark. You know, you know what I mean? Who wants to do this show? If you want to be on it, the best and fastest way to get on it is be like, can I be on your show? And I'm like, oh my God, yes, immediately. You're on my fucking show. Uh, because when this is famous in another 13 years, people are going to regret that they didn't come on my show. And by then, the t-shirts are going to be twice as much, you stupid fuckers. Right. Mon frere. 
That's absolutely, dude. So I mean, like I said, I mean, that's where that's where I could draw the line. I just I I I got a lot of things from being in Tracy's life. I got new friends. I have what I consider to be two beautiful granddaughters that were a gift that were handed to me. Right. right. Um, I got uh, I got Tracy's parents and a family, and I, not that I don't have a family, I do. But I just got extra. I got bonus family. You know what I mean? Absolutely, so, dude. That's so dope. But so did she. I mean, my family, you know, my family loves she. I mean, my granddaughter loves her. Like, that's her grandma. You know what I mean? So different, right? So, yeah, dude. Like I said, we're, we're moving good, and we're, do, we're doing good, so. That's all good, man. It sounds like everything's good, and I'm excited for this next step. Like, this step was kind of like a like karma reward, because you guys didn't go out and be like, well, maybe you did. I don't know. I know you guys wanted to move. Right, you were you were tired of living there. It's too small. You guys have expanded. Just Tracy's merchandise itself demanded a bigger house, and then and then uh, and then uh, oh my god, you could have a whole kiss wall, bro. Oh my god, what was your trashy? Tra- what was your fucking? Well, you don't have to say it on this, but that made me laugh. I because I just wrote it down and I sent it to her, and then I went back and I was looking at. It, I was like, son of a bit. Well, see, I can tell you that all my friends, all of my, a lot of my buddies call me. The trash man, because I've been just like, I'll take the trash out, you know what I mean? Get rid of you. Now you're terrifying sometimes, bro. It's like you start <laughs> telling some of your stories, and I'm like, Tim, you don't have to make direct eye contact while you're telling me what you did to that dude, okay? I, I don't need to hear that. <laughs> no, it's good to get it out, I guess. So, yeah, dude, I mean, I know the trash tra- man. I do got to go pick up Tracy, but my, my handle is Trashy Kiss Fan. Trashy Kiss fan. Okay, well, okay, we're going to end this then with uh, your chance to give some shout outs and not just to Tracy, but I mean, like, if you, uh, your YouTube, uh, so my, any, anything, my you know. YouTube was, I, you know, I kind of put it on a little hiatus because I'm trying to get uh, Chucky T Smoked Eats and Barbecue uh, YouTube channel, and I have a Facebook with that same name. Um, I, I do tutorials on how to do good smoking and things of that nature. I'm gonna I'm gonna go way deeper into it this next season coming up. So yeah, I'd like uh, to be a guest on a live one of those. <laughs> and that's my plan. A couple moving forward is bringing my friends over and saying, "Hey, I'm cooking this, and you're gonna help." So. Yeah. Just so I'll, I'll just be there to eat it. That's it. I'll be like, "Help! Fuck you! I'm on a quality control panel." <laughs> It's also kind of interesting, you know, the, to me, it is just a Zen thing. I get to fucking cook all this meat. It's awesome. Yeah. But yeah, junky tea, smoked eats, and barbecue. Because when I do move forward on this down the road, I am going to, my ultimate goal, Dennis, is to have a, as a food truck and roll around and stop and, and, and like, post up by weed stores and for the day. In my parking lot for fucking sure, man. 100%. I, that's what I'm saying. I'm trying to make those connections now. Like, hey, by the way, I'm going to have a food truck. And I will be bring cool. it. I'll buy a t-shirt. That helps out the stores, too, because you're going to go in there, and then you're going to be like, well, I want some of this for you. are going to come for the barbecue, and you're going to be at the store. I mean, that's my plan, dude. So, I mean, I'm, I'm, I'm working with that. So, that's going to be my brand. I'm, I'm about, I think, after we move, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to lock that down with some... Uh, <laughs> He's here. Tim Lambert, L A M B E R T, right? I'll make sure I got that right in the graphics. All right, my man. Dude, I love you to death. Thank you for doing this. You're going to be uh, number one on episode six. So you won't even have to scroll through other people to watch yours. And as I, as always, a uh, little bit of a. Uh, it's going to be. All right, man. Go get a little mama metal. And, and I love you, man. Thank you for being on a moment forward. with Tim Lambert. Uh, I'll bro, talk to you I'll later, talk. my friend. Yeah. All right. Bye-bye, buddy. Thank you. Yeah. See how easy that was? <laughs> All right. Well, that was Mr. Tim Lambert. Dude, love that, man. Love him. When I think that in a time that almost every concert I went to in Washington, that man was the head of the uh, of the crew that put Donald together. This, this shit. And that man has been with my best friend as she's been on this incredible journey. And that man is an awesome human being, and I'm really glad he did this. And again, always great answers from everybody, dude. 
Fun, 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 and the sun, sun, sun. Well, I live in Washington, so there is no sun. All right, well, let's see who's next here on a moment with... You know, because, yeah. uh, oh, God, hold on. Just let me take a second to look at you. See, you're on a big 42-inch screen right here. It's all oh, chuck. Perfect. Yeah, you're life-size times two. But over here is the studio. So, hey, man, I appreciate you playing, man. And you're a name that's so, going to get me some subscriptions. I know it. And hopefully drum you up a little business. You know? Lucky name. To, yeah, um, okay. Here comes the recording. All right, sorry. <laughs> which I'm really excited about. Now, these are just quick interviews. I do do another long-form interview thing that I'm working on, but I've been distracted by these because they're just yeah. better, just a thousand yeah. times better. All right, man. bam. So yeah, man, fucking good to see you, dude. And you do, I appreciate you fucking doing this for me. Uh, this is just my attempt to bring in a little bit of positivity and a time where it doesn't matter what you believe or what you see, it's just been the negative bullshit. Right. Negative bullshit. Um, it's times like these, I'm glad I'm in Alaska. Yeah, yeah, no, it's times like these. I wish I was in Alaska and yeah. as far into Alaska as I could die. Yeah, no, nah, actually, it's not. I live in a little, I live in like what would be considered if Bremer or if Wasilla and Seward somehow had a baby. Yeah. Yeah, okay. just, it's just, you know, other than the tweaker population, which is Everywhere. fun. <laughs> yeah, overwhelmingly disgusting. So. Yeah. Well, I'm sure you got a quick look at my questions, these stupid questions yeah. I'm asking. I do two episodes in a row. I, me trying to find happy shit is hard because I word shit weird. I'm like, so what is it that doesn't make you want to slit your own throat? And, you know, <laughs> I'm sure there's some people that could find inspiration in that. But believe it or not, I'm trying to be normal and sanish. So, yeah, yeah man. A um, little bit about yourself. Your, you, I guess this is your part. So, yeah, go ahead. Say yeah. hi. Hello, everybody. This is... Getting off work here, doing a little interview with Rot, but things are good. Got my little studio here that I've been recording some bands with lately, and yeah, things yeah. are going all right, you know. Like you been... actually talked about in Ryan's episode because I was discussing with him how annoying it is with the old school uh, people that record that aren't truly metal don't understand that metal vocalists have a technique that's different. Yeah. And standing there with cans on. And fucking with the thing there, like with your arms by your side, it's like I don't. Yeah. This isn't what I do, man. Like, right. so Ryan was talking about how you just like told him to bring his own mic, yeah. Fucking do what you do, and that's right. that's what you got to do, man. So I'm excited for you. Plus, just kind of knowing I was in there before it was all finished, and and you built yeah. a house around it, or did you build the house around the studio? I'm not sure which came first. Uh, I built this studio and the addition around the existing house. It was nice. like a little twenty four by twenty four. Pretty much a little crack shack. <laughs> I mean, it wasn't too bad. We had some friends that had moved up here from Colorado and worked on it a little bit, but I just came in and finished it. And my family grew a little bit, so I needed to make my house grow a little bit. So, nice and in the seems. meantime, I promised myself I'd build a place dedicated to my music. And somehow yeah. I'm recording bands and shit now instead of it just being a jam room but and you're putting out your own stuff every day I'm loving that shit loving yeah. you put together the video with you play the guitar and you play the yeah. guitar and then the drums and yeah. uh, anybody who doesn't know Chuck is the uh, human version of a metronome I'm about to get a knock on my door so one second alright you are truly an amazing drummer I met this man he was in a cover band I was kind of a snob I always looked down on like cover oh look at this guy making money making music <laughs> having fun uh, yeah. But he could play anything and everything. And then I auditioned for, I think it was a Thousand Year War. What? Yeah, I think that's when I formally met you guys. Yeah. And then we jammed in a band that was yeah. amazing. And the tightest band I've personally ever been in. And you were a big part of that. And then, uh, yeah, now you're in, you guys are still Psycho Mule. Yeah, we still kind of got Psycho Mule going on. I got a new project going on now. That's yeah. awesome pretty metal i mean it's it's kind of a little bit of both you know we have kind of straightforward rock and then a little bit of metal mixed in and is alan by chance part of that 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 gig no he's not oh. but his brother mikey is mikey that I'm, i got that messed yeah. up in my head mikey's a bass player right yeah yeah he, kind of he played with i played he, he kind of started with us fucking around writing music and then we started writing really good music and we're like shit let's get some people together and form a band and it's been a pretty cool journey so far and I'm looking forward to showing it off to everybody once it's all ready to go. 
are you uh are you contributing riffs to it too and stuff is that... i pretty much do all the writing dude what a what a oh my god well i hope i, I hope you find somebody to record it all for you <laughs> you know it's always hard to find that recording artist yeah or plays no nah, that's awesome and what is the name of your studios again Shumway studios dude awesome awesome all right man well let's get to the questions dude uh all right. God, I can't wait till I come back up there again, dude. And I'll have a new band, and uh, yeah. we'll we'll maybe we'll get to play together. We'll be yeah. the out we'll be the outsiders, the lower forty eighters, man. Take me hunting. What's snow yeah, machines? Yeah, right, yeah. <laughs> we'll ride a snowmobile. Shoot. Okay, man. Your first question, and thank you for playing. Is uh, we've you know we've had lots of time to think in the last year for some weird reason, and I was just wondering if it's occurred to you or God, I hate this part. I'm so stupid at this. All right, three, two, one. What is the difference to you, my man, between living and existing? Well, for me, I feel like existing is just doing the bare minimum, just getting by, getting your ass up, and doing whatever it is to get you through your day, where as living is actually doing something extra, you know, whether it be art, whether it be music, you know, whether it be just being a good person and going doing your civil duty. You know, hey, I feel like if you're yeah. living, you'll you'll know you're living. You know, and existence is just a state of mind. So. Yeah, I've I've found some people don't really look at it like the existence side of it isn't. I thought some people would be like, well, if you just lay around, you don't fucking do nothing. But in some cases, just existing is a necessity in life to yeah. get you through to the point where you can live. I mean, look like at you sitting in your own fucking studio. You obviously have been living. You yeah. know. By the way, the red, black, and red and black and everything. This is the best looking goddamn frame I've had in a while. Yeah, it makes me want to play a game of checkers. Yeah, yeah, always. Yeah. Move those pieces around. They're just they're just musicians yeah. now. Well, I've always been kind of a I always had a love for red and black for some oh, reason. They're my two Still favorite together. colors. Because they're awesome, yeah. that's why. Yeah. They're awesome and you can't get you can't get looped into a gang if you combine the two of them. Yo man, I'm neutral, dude. Yeah, that might be more of a problem down here than. Yeah, down I don't there. think like, we got to gang I don't wear red laces in my woods. combat boots anymore because I don't want somebody to be like, ah, Nazi. I'm like, no. Yeah, no shit, right? <laughs> and they won't let me on the stage right now, so I have no choice but to. Yeah, harass, yeah. I think that's pretty much killing all of us right now, especially us that live for that moment. And Benjamin, that first show though, when you're back out there, that crowd. And, and I'm thinking oh, for the metal I shows, I like the bubble idea of everybody being in their own personal bubbles. People, <laughs> yeah. the wall of deaths will be hilarious. People bouncing up and getting stuck in the ceiling and shit. And, you know, like when the spring break fuckers <laughs> volleyballing oh, and shit. Dude, oh, fuck yes, yeah, serve. Dude, uh, you know, like Kirk Hammond <laughs> kicked that fucking black ball into that baby's face. I don't know if you ever yeah. saw that video. When the, Yeah, dude, that, that shit would be hilarious. Spikes would be an issue with the metalheads. Yeah. But hey, who knows? The new Mashi may be those penny picker uppers, you know, that do that cardio shit. They got uh, yeah. lots of space between them. They're still getting their energy yeah. out there. We'll be back, dude. It sucks. Penny but... pickers, that's hilarious. I've never heard uh, that. That's actually what one of the hardcore kids called it. He said, Yeah, we're all, all the penny pickers. Every time yeah, this kid went exactly to a show, broken fingers or like a broken foot. I'm like, Well, yeah, you're doing. Anyways, I don't want to get into it. The, the, left yeah. a little pissed. That's, hey, like... that's a whole other conversation. Hey, there. They're all skinny. They're all skinny, and they all can do parkour. All right, man. Well, <laughs> I guess that's question that's number two is a life goals, man. Personal, yeah. and you are actually a rather right, accomplished man. Right and you own your own business. You and your brothers. You, uh, yeah. you, you're a dad. You're a music. You're a very talented. You're not a drummer. You're a musician, and now yeah. you're you're starting to wear that mantle of a producer and and studio. I mean, dude. Yeah, and you just you always set new goals, and you're always moving forward. But I can imagine from the little I know of you, you did have a bit of a misspent youth, I think, you know, maybe yeah, I maybe did. some things. But the, so the next question also, I take the word fail out of it, even though in the question it says fail. That's the wrong way to word it. What I mean is just yeah. something you either you thought you were going to be growing up and you didn't do it or or maybe just something you kind of fucked up and you want a chance to redo it or, you know, along those lines kind of thing. Sure. Yeah, meh, but not fail. Yeah. But um, you could have. Yeah, I mean, everybody's dumb when they're teenagers and shit. You know, I was the youngest of, uh, there's four of us brothers growing up. And Damn. I was, uh, the my brother Marcus was the next one youngest to me, and he was five years older than me, so it kind of gives you a idea of the age difference there. I so love Marcus. It always kind of worked out in my favor, though. I'm 16, my brother's 21, you know, I need some booze, call my brother, whatever. But they kind of always included me, and 
and maybe it wasn't the best thing, but <laughs> <laughs> you know, I, I mean, everybody partied though. And of course, like I fucked off in school and I didn't do everything I wanted to. I mean, if I was smart, I probably would have continued my education went and got a college degree and then I'd be sitting around making hundreds of thousands of dollars a year fucking sitting in front of a computer instead of out there busting my ass every day. But on the other side of that, I'm very glad that I do what I do because it keeps me humble, you know, and I enjoy working hard and I enjoy building shit and, you know, it's kind of, there's something about a hard day's work that makes you feel good at the end of the day, you know. Well, and every time you, you drive around, that's, you, you build, yeah. you, you, you build things that are forever and your brother still, I mean, you guys own a business together and yep. see it, thinking of you in a suit and tie all day and then it'd be a different set. <laughs> you wouldn't have built that studio with your bare hands. You would have had somebody yeah. build it for you. And I think you would have been, you've been rich as fuck though. Cause you're a smart dude. Yeah. Incredibly smart. Yeah. Well, I've wanted to always be a rock star too. And I haven't given up on that dream yet. I'm still Don't. pushing that and. You know, it's actually been really cool doing this whole studio thing. I've gotten to meet a lot of really cool musicians that I probably would have never had a chance to. Oh, you know, and on the other side of the musicians that I did know, I, I got to get to know them a little better, more on a personal level instead of like, hey, what's up? We're at the bar. Yeah, you're that drummer. You're that, you know, I mean, you, it's uh, nice to kind of get a little more personal and grow some camaraderie with these guys. And That's cool. It's been great. Cool. You know? Yeah. I, no, I feel man. very blessed to have been given as many chances as I have with people and, I couldn't tell you how nice it would be as a musician who wanted to record something to know that the dude that's recording's a fucking metalhead. I mean, of course, you could play anything. I know you. You've played in cover bands, and you're a very talented man. But to know that, you know that. You know that. I mean, I'm sorry, but the old school stuff, they came up differently. They don't get it. They don't get what yeah. the tone is. I love Kurt Ryman. Love him. Amazing guy yeah, and all those guys guy. out there. But we need the new guys coming up. Look, man, say what you will about this whole thing. I'm just kind of looking forward to the appreciation levels of people again on a on a level, and and you're kind of right at the beginning of a when it comes together, people are gonna be playing. There's gonna be a whole yeah. bunch. How you know, many people picked up guitars in the oh, last year? I mean, there's gonna be a boom, and you're right there, buddy, and you're right yeah. there, right yeah. fucking there, dude. So that's gonna be cool, man. Well, no, I'm gonna have to get a bigger facility. This ain't gonna cut it no more. <laughs> yeah, shit. That's be my home office. Can, yeah, that'll just be your little. Boy, and then you buy out a warehouse somewhere. Then you're yeah. doing venues. Then you That's got right. shows. Come home and do my homework. <laughs> Fuck, dude. Well, awesome, man. That is awesome. I also want to mention that you did get to, uh, you did get to open up for uh, who was that? That weirdo band, you know, the one that goes around and grabs musicians from every fucking state he plays. And what? Are you, oh, Bill Man Speaker is such. Jello, what, yeah. Who does that? It's... Talk about zero ego. Z well, yeah. then I hear once it goes live, though, the motherfucker's like, it's Marshall, and he yeah. does his thing, but because I, I talked so to He was so fucking cool, man. I'll tell you about that guy. The first time I met him, Sarah Peterson had got a hold of me, like, the day before, and was like, can any of you guys pick him up from the airport? And I was like, uh, fuck yeah. I will definitely be on that shit. Dude. So I go to the airport, and here comes this dude with two fucking trash cans full of masks, <laughs> wearing a fucking shirt inside out with some fucking... Uh, motorcycle boots and shorts on and it gets you this is like middle of winter yeah, in Alaska yeah, yeah he didn't know what the hell was going on and he's like cruising around and he was like well where do you live and I was like I live out in Wasilla and he's like well you, you got family and all that and I said yeah he's all cool let's go to your house now <laughs> you know and this was when this was all just not even existing oh, I've seen every single video you guys put out every single live cast I'm friends with him yeah. now on Facebook I yeah. mean uh, yeah, thank you. He's a great guy, man, and he's yeah. he's fucking hilarious in the energy he puts out. It reminds me a lot of like doing shows with you and shit, like just having that well, fucking crowd. What's it like to? Because when we, we you're about my age, we're in the same age range. I may be five years older than yours. So I'm yeah. turning forty seven here soon, so I'm oh, you're way older than me. I'm yeah, you're not even forty yet, are you? <laughs> yeah, all right, whatever. I'm an old man. But when we listen to that little pig song and them and the little, you know green jello sucks. The way this whole attitude was, uh, yeah. I just. But for you guys to get there, you, Donnie, Jamie, uh, and yeah, was, uh, Marty, to stand Marty. in a room and learn the songs and learn, even though if, I guess once it goes live, it just turns into a shit show and yeah. not a shit show either, a beautiful right. green jello show or G jelly, yeah. jello or jelly. Well, and that's the thing. We're all serious musicians. So we're like, all right, we're going to get these songs fucking perfect. And he comes up to me and he's all, well, did you guys learn all the songs? And we go, yeah. 
we got him tight as shit. He's all, well, that sucks because we're not going to do him anything like that tonight. <laughs> He's just going to follow the puppet leader. I'm going to tell you what to do. And the poor sound guy, man, fucking Adam. Adam I did it. For that guy. Like, yeah. He spent like two hours like making the whole stage like perfect and getting everything <laughs> all fucking set up. Here comes Bill Manspeaker fucking shoving speakers out of the way, saying, this ain't going to work. You need to move everything back. Everything back. You're going to have everybody up here. Oh, you know, he's just this very animated character. Yeah, he's got a lot of charisma, dude. He's, he yeah. strikes me as one of those that could just, just like, just Jesus Christ, do it. Yeah. yeah. And then he's like, crank the bass amps, crank the guitars. Fuck everybody. <laughs> like, I saw it in Adam's face. He just panicked, but he held it together really good. And, what an experience. Awesome. What it was an, an experience. experience. Can't wait to do it again. Yeah, and you will. You know it once you're in there now. Yeah. Oh, man. That's cool, dude. Yeah, didn't he? I thought he was supposed to come back again or something. And that he, did. Got... he did a second show oh, that's up right. here in Alaska with him. That now, one the was, second uh... time, was it a little more, hey, what's up, Bill? You know, like. Yeah, I think it was because everybody had just seen the show that first time. Bill had just gone on a three day tour. He hadn't had any fucking sleep. He wasn't planning on doing that three-day tour. He was supposed to just come up here, chill out for a couple of days, and do the one show. But he was going. He was up for like 72 hours. Maybe got like a two-hour nap. Yeah. And he was just like, all right. People were just. It got a little crazy. People were just throwing fucking shit at us in the mass. So Bill was like, fuck it, we're done. But it was cool because Psycho Mule came in and we got to play some shit yeah. for us and right. Yeah, that's, and, that's so awesome. You, you know, to do that shit. The music never stopped. It's, but it was a good time. I think part of their show is that you don't you don't know what the fuck you're getting, man. And a man's been doing it for thirty fucking years now. You know? <laughs> his own relationship yeah. with his kid and everything, dude. He's a good guy. Oh yeah, he's, he's a one good of the guy. best. His adventures on the road are just to die for, dude. He don't give a <laughs> fuck. Yeah, and his motley crew of characters he knows all around the world. <laughs> dude, yeah, I wish and, well that's it. That's all I wanted for you, man. Uh, dude. Oh, my premiere's coming up. Cool. So episode five with Ryan Hall, Mercy Dean Colfield, and another friend of mine's coming up at eight on YouTube. Um, this will be out within a week or two. It depends on. I still got to get two more guests for this episode and yeah. all that shit. But Chuck, right, fucking buddy. Shubway. Anything you would shum away, not Shubway. Yeah. Anybody, uh, anything you want to shout out or uh, anything like that? St uh, yeah, Shubway I mean, Studios. Just thank you for having me on, man. Yeah, I got the studio and. Oh yeah. Should have some openings available soon. Um, get them scheduled now if you want to get in. Yeah, um, I uh, I would like to. Up, pretty I'm pretty much through February right now, so. Damn, dude, that's awesome. After that, you know, I, can, I can't wait to start seeing it come out. I can't wait yeah. to see what you're putting out. Have you got? Has anybody? Have you released yeah, anything Mar yet? Yeah, Mara Shadow. Check out that band. That's the latest one I've been doing. They got two songs released. They just released one out yesterday. It's called Burden of Trust. It's on Spotify, Apple Music, all that. It's. Yeah. So now you're building. It's some good dudes in that band, man. Like you're building, you're building fucking talented. construction houses, roofs, fixing people's lives, and now you're fucking oh, yeah. building, I'm building the empire. Above and yeah, beyond bro. roofing and construction. So if you need a roof done or drywall or a deck built or a house built or side or whatever you need, we can do it. <laughs> I know this for a We're fact. I've, Facebook, so I've been a, up. I've been a patch boy before. The work yeah, is true is and it's quality. <laughs> Yep, yep. That damn Creekside Plaza job, that was the longest drawn out piece of shit repair I've ever done in my life. <laughs> God damn it. All right, man. All right, All right Chuck Shumway, fucking stay sane, stay warm up right. there, and uh, right. I'll see you around, brother. All right, man. Metal. All right, take care. Drum rock, dude. If you will, would go back and Ooh. check out some on <laughs> yeah, YouTube, you can find some old machine corpse of him back there. He looks like he's thinking right, about what he wants to make for breakfast the next day while he's playing the most intricate, destructive beats I've ever seen. He's been in several projects. He's a family man, a good guy, a hard-working motherfucker, dude. And uh, I wish him nothing but the best. And I will see him soon, and one day I will pay to have him record something for me. You go on YouTube and whatnot and find videos of Cycle Mule, AK. Check them out. They are fucking awesome and really good friends of mine and uh, uh, you actually can hear one of their songs in the beginning of every hiking with rot and that's called goodbye again it's one of my favorite songs motherfucking cycle mule check them out all right let's see who is up next <laughs> well guys welcome to segment three of episode six 
My final guest for this episode is the amazing BFF, Allison Rose, a.k.a. The Pufferfish. Uh, she has her own podcast. We'll get to that at the end. Um, and uh, I'm really glad that you could uh, take the time to do this, although technically we could probably do it in one of the other studios since I could yell this interview to you. It's true. Fine. This is more fun, though. Yes. No, this is better, and it's good, and I guess I'm going to be on yours here soon, too. So, not mm -hmm. All righty. So, all right. Welcome to it. Anything you want to say about yourself real quick? Just that I am Allison Rose, and I am 38 years old, and at this weird point in my life where I'm sort of like re- defining and rediscovering myself, which is a big part of my podcast. Um, and uh, Oh, you mean nap time? Or like on <laughs> hey. a per personal level? <laughs> yeah, I probably shouldn't call it out, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Let's just leave our illusions in place. Whatever. Everybody's got nap time. Um, <laughs> um, and podcast. I know. That's yeah. Good. That's good. Oh, Enjoy. the other thing is... um. My brother-in-law bought me this these tiny hands, um, and I've been really uh, digging them. I've been, like, taking them to Starbucks, you know, and I, like, wave at the barista and stuff. It makes my day. Yeah. It, was the best, it was the best gift I've ever received. All so. right. Well, that's cool. Uh, yeah. Yeah, the, the signs of COVID really getting people down, the quarantine things. People are going crazy. You're waving at yeah. strangers with tiny hands. Okay, yep. <laughs> I'm going to buy off of Amazon one of those tiny little clickers. They, yeah. <clears throat> okay, so Allison, question number one. What to you, my friend, is the difference between living and existing? And go. Light question for the morning. I know, right? It's, it's very early and, for and this. And to be fair, most people got this emailed out to her, but since I'm a lazy piece of shit and she lives right there, I literally told her the questions before I went to the bathroom. So did, she hasn't yeah. had time to really think about it, but she's smart. I haven't. So, uh, sometimes she's fancy and European. So let's see what <laughs> uh, the difference between living and existing for me, I would say existing is sort of like sort of like 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 black and white. Like you're just going through the motions that are. That, that you're that you're supposed to do so breathing eating saying how are you I'm fine you know that that to me is existing as a human uh, living as a human is more colorful more like 3d it's more you're you're asking deep questions um, when when someone says how are you you don't say I'm fine you say it's complicated because there's all these things. So I, yeah, I think I think the the difference is is existing is more robotic and living is more uh, alive. Interact. Yeah. A lot of I'm fines going around right now. Nobody seems mm -hmm. to remember that fine means fucked up, insecure, neurotic, and emotional. Uh, yes. For the record, my roommate does not have COVID. She has allergies. I have really bad allergies. <clears throat> and right now, in the middle of winter, everything seems to be blooming again. <laughs> I don't get this state what the as hell? my dog is shedding like it's summertime. So I, I also noticed a fuck ton of spiders already. Uh, I know it went up to 45 degrees and apparently that's the birth. So hopefully it drops down again. And all those fuckers die. Yeah. Well, that's a good answer. That's a good answer. That seems to oh, be uh, the gist of it. You know, uh, some yeah. people went a little deeper into it on an existential reason. And a lot of people were just more like seems kind of basic. And, and for the record, I, I use Google to come up with these questions because I was just like, Google, give me a list of positive questions. And and it because it, I'm not I don't think like that. I'm, I like it. Yeah. All right. Well, good answer. Yeah. Number two, this, I, I love that. I don't have to catch up with you or anything. You know what I mean? Like this is going to be the easiest, quickest one. I'll probably have this episode done because I'm just blasting Sweet. through. Yeah. Good. Uh, Cause you are the last one on this one. I've been putting it off. Um, the next question. And uh, so to so people who don't know, you grew up at least some of your years in Europe, right? Mm -hmm. In Italy. Uh, yeah. 
Italy, 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 or whatever. Italia and, and Montreal as well. And Montreal, wow. Mm -hmm. wow. Yeah. Cool. So in Montreal is what that that's in Pittsburgh or <laughs> Where's Montreal? Isn't that a seasoning? French Canada. French oh, Canada. Oh, yeah, 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 yeah. French Canada. Is that, oh, is yeah. that important? Is that it's very is important. It... There's a very big difference between French Canada and non French <clears throat> Canada. They okay, were well, trying right. to they were trying to secede for a long time. Hmm. Uh, and I would, I would like to point out how hilarious it is, as as I've just told you, that dude the other day, I was like, you know, I, I try to give her cultural references or say shit, but when she was young, she wasn't watching, like, Blossom or the TV shows that we watched, so there's always just this blank look in her eyes, and I was like, you know, for somebody with a master's degree, you're pretty dumb. <laughs> it turns out she's just learned to be like, oh, Alf, sure, I Alf all the time. <laughs> I out my pants last night, as a matter of fact. So, the next question. This one's a little easier, maybe, or a little harder. Uh, and it, and it's basically just, uh, what was something in your life that, when you were younger, you thought was something you wanted to do or become, or something you attempted and, again, don't like the word failed, but weren't able to complete it, or life moved on, or something, and you would like to get back to that, or something you would like to revisit, or build off of, you know what I mean? Does that, does that make sense? Yeah, yeah. Well, I'm glad sense. I've asked everybody completely different ways throughout the one episode, <laughs> because I don't have my notes, but yeah, yeah. that's pretty much the gist of it, and okay. go. Okay. Well, this is this, this puff of fish. What? Uh, what? This puff is of fish. What? Don't do that. We're in the middle <laughs> of a podcast. All that out. Sorry. Puff of um, fish. Puff of sorry. fish. Don't do that. It'll be another uh, fish. Puff of fish. Okay. So this is a sad story, but then it gets happy. Oh, good. Um, these are my favorite kind. <laughs> so when I was young, when I was a kid, I really wanted to be uh, a famous actor, actress, and. I, as, as a kid, I was, I was pretty, um, not shy until about middle schoolish time. Um, uh, no, no, no. Before that elementary school time, I got picked on a lot in school and it really, really shattered my self-esteem. And so because of that shattering of my self-esteem, I sort of took a in-the-shadows stance and never wanted to be the center of attention and never uh, – I mean, I remember, like, in sixth grade, I did not speak in class one time the entire year. So in sixth grade, the, the, my like shyness and avoidance of, of, of any attention got so bad that I didn't speak the entirety of my sixth grade in, in class. Like I didn't say one, I didn't say one word to anyone. And when people would say something to me, I would turn like beet red. Wow, like really? I was just like, yeah, like I was just so terrified of like, I don't know, being made fun of. I had really bad anxiety, too, as a kid. So, anyway, um, and so that dream of being an actress or being on stage was dead for for many, many, many years until <laughs> two years ago when I conquered that fear and got up on stage and, and started telling jokes. Thanks just telling to jokes. this guy. Telling jokes. No, you got up there and blew people away. Our little local Lisa, whatever the hell that lady's last name is, you are crass. And it's so cool because you come off so cutesy, Betty Boop style. Like, I don't know how to describe it. You're like, doop, 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 doop. I fuck dudes behind trash cans and I like it. <laughs> He's like, like, what the fuck? And you're just like, uh, it was so, even me with my fucked up sense of humor, I was just like, everything she says offends me. I love it. Uh, <laughs> You're like, no, it's funny because from when I met you on, I mean, you had such a brash personality and we're so, you know, now I know you, I know a little better and I, but like, you know, and it just comedy to me. I was, I was just like, why aren't you doing it? I could do it. You could do it. And I'm only 
a month or so ahead of you on the whole yeah. getting on stage and doing comedy. I'm yeah. light years ahead of you and most humans on getting on stage and making people beat the fuck out of each other for me. Of course. <laughs> it's not about me. So <laughs> then overcoming that, so you kind of, so to answer the question, you felt like you never were going to have an opportunity to be able to sh to get out there because I mean you know and then you got up there and you did I mean you still claim well I, th I think you do have pretty heavy stage fright and uh, oh yeah. yeah yeah I mean but now that I know you and this will be on your podcast so I'm not gonna say it but I mean like I I see some of your traits and your defensive mechanisms and the fact that you overcome that anyways and do it and you're harder on yourself than I am on myself and I don't know if that's because you're uh, part Jewish. And you're just very <laughs> critical of yourself, uh, yeah. or if it's because you're very smart. And on one hand, you see what you're doing wrong, and you're constantly psychoanalyzing yourself. I'm like, you could do better, and then you're like, yeah, nah. Uh, I don't know. It's, it, we have a lot of personality traits alike like that. But you are yeah. fucking hilarious, and you're like me. Everybody could tell you, and you just ignore them. But then you're given all these opportunities. You've already hosted a couple shows. Uh, you pretty much became. Uh, before the 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 vid, you became the the hostess of uh, cookies. I Rest did. Peace. Yeah. Um, <laughs> I know. Hold on. Let me just say in response to that, I missed that. You are. Oh, you don't want to edit you... this part out, right? If you go ahead you and can't. start praising me, you go ahead and get you get three seconds. Go. You are the reason, literally, that I have a, that I'm doing a podcast, that I get up on stage, that I am re learning how to love myself it is you you are oh, a good. fucking because i remember about four or five months into covid you were like i can't love myself anymore i have run out of porn but then for my <laughs> second, yeah, I, knew, I thought for a second you uh, that was beautiful on my part yeah, i've also saved your li life literally like at least 30 times shutting off certain appliances and stuff and i know you're trying to be serious and thank me and i know you know i'm not going to take that i've also taught you not how to be a dirty beardist you know when i first met you <laughs> I mean, I don't wear a beard around you because I feel uncomfortable now. It's the only reason I shave it off uh, because I just, you know, I don't like being looked at like that, like a second class citizen just because I'm a white it's guy not, with a beautiful beard. It's not second class. It's just I'm not going like to recognize you. Who, your new podcast. Yeah. Uh, what a great premise. This genius Thank brain you. of yours coming at things. Everybody else takes an angle. And here comes uh, little Miss Pufferfish with her. By the way, I call her Pufferfish because when she gets sad, she goes... And she puffs out her fucking lip like like that, yeah. And she looks like a fucking I don't know why. I just one day I was like, oh, puffer fish. And then, but then uh, we learned then we learned that that dolphins fuck. intentionally fuck with puffer fishes. They poke them so that they expand, and then the dolphins use them like to play like like ball with them. We should start a podcast called the <laughs> Doctor Dolphin and Doctor Puffer Fish, and we talk about. Nothing but marine biology without having oh any idea God. what we're talking about. We 100% should. Yeah, we're talking, but we should uh, Fuck, that's okay, such so a good idea. Revising Allison Rose, which everybody re can see right there, is her little logo. Reviving. <laughs> that she, design, she had a local artist and a good friend of ours, Thomas Friday, which is also the, a fakest, comedian. the fakest fucking name of any living human being ever, dude. Uh, Friday. Thomas uh, uh, Friday. Friday, Thomas Friday. <laughs> call me, my friends call me TF. What your podcast? Song. The premise, the idea, where it came from. No, no, it's fine. It's, we can be funny and serious. I know. That's uh, our thing. That's our thing. It's thing. our thing. It's our thing. <laughs> People don't even know what's coming, man. I know. It's a lot easier to do these things when you can go talk to the person you're interviewing. <laughs> Uh, should be some great oh. outtakes. <laughs> I say so. Revi reviving Allison yeah. Rose. Um, go. Reviving Allison Rose is like a personal healing project that I am really <laughs> started just because I was like, I need people to talk to. <laughs> And because of COVID, you know, and it's so, um, but then it really turned into, as I started um, kind of mapping it out and you know how my brain works, like made all these charts and stuff about like what I, about you. what I, what I want to achieve and how I'm going to get there and what I, what, what the, the little, my little map 
ended with was was achieving self-love without the need for any kind of external validation just like i see people love themselves and i want to <laughs> i want to be like that i want to be able to be like that so i think that's I'm, an illusion i think everybody hates themselves a lot more maybe. than they love themselves and a lot of people compensate by trying to help everybody else before they could help themselves and not to bring up one of my favorite lyrics I've ever wrote but killing yourself at a pace you can never keep up with always trying to be everyone's every man burning out now with such a quickness a star on its way to nuclear destruction it's just a song about that I've always seen people do that and then they're always like you're so selfish and I'm like I'm working on myself and then I'm like oh vagina and then 10 years later I'm like well I ruined her life Let's see what, whose life I could ruin next. You, Russian girl, come to me. Bam, ruined her life. Tried out yeah. marriage, didn't do too well. You know why? Because I don't love myself at all. And I won't even allow myself to like myself. And uh, mm. that's some bullshit because I'm all right. I'm okay. And yours, though, is funny because you were saying how, like, you know, you need to learn how to do this all on your own and then so you make a podcast created specifically to what's this what's so what's the premise what's the premise of this podcast uh, I, I am interviewing people to tell me their journey and and how they got to their place of self-love nice. and then i'm asking them for advice and then i ask them for advice it's pretty That's simple but uh I know you are. <laughs> it's cool. Like I've only done three interviews so far, but all of them have been very different with yes. different people. I'm trying to get as many different perspectives as possible. And they've been really inspiring. Yeah. Have you and gotten, have, makes... have you been surprised by the ant? Do you ask it as a question or like, what, what do you think is wrong with me? Or how do you kind of phrase it or. <laughs> It, it depends on who, who I'm interviewing. So the first interview was my best friend, Sam. Um, she and I have been friends for, oh my God, since 2000. And she knows me better than I know myself. And we, so, so the, I sort of flat out asked her, like, what are my biggest flaws in terms of my ability to get to this self-love place? And, uh, and she, she laughed, but she, I mean, was just so spot on and and it was and hearing it from another person I know it, it but hearing it from another person and then having to edit it and hearing it over and over oh my and, God. Over, and yeah. over again it's really like clicking you know yeah, yeah. <laughs> Dude, that's the thing I, I put a post about that I was like you guys get to see these micro interviews but I I got to sit there and talk with somebody for an hour who I love dearly and and uh, even don't know and now I know a little bit of something about them I got more of their character it's it's good and where yeah. can people find uh, all these uh, it's going they're gonna be released on youtube i'm hoping the first two are gonna be done by tonight cool so, you so got I'll, i'm gonna have a uh, yeah i'll have a facebook yeah i'll have a facebook page specifically for this um and then and then i'll upload them to youtube congratulations Thanks. allison rose those are great answers Thanks. Um, I expected them to be because you are one of my smartest, most intelligent, and uh, proof that women can almost be funny if they work really hard at it. And uh, men guide them to the process. Hashtag. That logo you got is pretty cool. I got to take Isn't it? that. Yeah. Yeah, it was your idea. I'm an idea man. I'm just not it a. Uh... It was Thomas's execution. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Nice. All right. Well, awesome. that was harmless. And I yeah. appreciate you being on, buddy. And it was fun. <laughs> I can, that's going to be really loud on both of our things. Idiot dogs, I uh, know. Yeah, well, I don't have my thing open, so. But I'm sure it's something vicious like a lady with a baby walking by or something. <laughs> Lester must <laughs> protect us from. Oh, yeah, Okay. For sure. Well, that was it. A moment with Allison okay. Rose. I love you, buddy. Thank you love for you being too. on my little thing. You just finished off episode six. Now I need three guests for episode seven. Maybe I'll grab your dad up for one. Ooh, that'd be interesting. That would be fascinating. All right. Oh my God! Watch. Shut up, Lester. Enough. Okay. <laughs> All right. Peace. <laughs> Thanks for having me. Love you. Love you too, buddy. I'll talk to you later. Anyway, yes. bye. All right. That was my BFF. Not to be taken away from my other BFF, Tracy. I just want to know.
I could have multiple BFFs because I have multiple personalities. Anyways, guys, that was it. That was episode six. Fucking, I cannot wait to get this one out. I got, man, I just know awesome people and I want you to hear their opinions of stuff. So, uh, yeah, I guess I got to get to work now and edit this down. So, thank you for watching A Moment With. And please give me a subscribe. Uh, go to my Facebook page, uh, Rockcast A Moment With and like it and follow us and merch and all this sort of shit's coming out soon shout out to my boy Dracalo fucking famous in five countries over 3k fucking listens people are buying it he's a guest spot uh, Dyer Sin Productions only client he's doing all the hard work I love that man so check out Dracalo on Bandcamp and uh, have a good day guys episode 7 coming at you. stay tuned Thanks, Thanks for, for listening. listening. This, this is Benny Dyson Production. Production. <laughs> 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 <laughs>